The aviation industry has been faced with a severe lack of competition, and the small manufacturers continue to be overshadowed by the overwhelming dominance of Boeing and Airbus. Meanwhile, Embraer appears, a Brazilian manufacturer determined to disrupt this stranglehold with its flagship E2, aspiring to become the game-changer for airlines. However, when expectations run high, disappointment often follows. Indeed, the E2 has not achieved the anticipated success no one seems to want it. Why is that? Could one of those two major manufacturers be the reason? Let's dive into that in today's episode. First, the E2 is not really a popular aircraft series, so we need to take a brief look before diving into the main reasons. The aircraft series includes some narrow-body aircraft variants that are designed and produced by a manufacturer from Brazil, Embraer. They introduced three variants for this item. The E-175, the smallest variant of E-2 with a maximum capacity of 90 passengers, and a payload is 98,000 pounds. The bigger is the E-190, which can carry max 114 passengers and has 135,000 pounds of payload. The last one, E-195, the largest variant of E-2, can carry 146 passengers for maximum capacity and the payload is 138,000 pounds. The E-2 series is an upgraded variant of the E-Jet that was launched successfully in 2002 by Embraer. However, it is equipped with many advanced features, helping it become one of the most modern and efficient in its segment. First, Embraer has equipped the aircraft with new wings, with a high aspect ratio and modern aerodynamic design, enhancing lift and optimizing overall operational performance. The company has also reduced the size of the horizontal stabilizer by 26% to minimize drag. Additionally, the manufacturer has gone even further by integrating a fly-by-wire flight control system with a closed-loop design aimed at reducing weight, improving fuel efficiency, enhancing control, and increasing safety for the aircraft during all phases of flight. The company has also upgraded the engines, replacing the General Electric CF348E with the Pratt & Whitney PW1000G engine, which enhances performance and provides over 24% fuel savings for the E2 compared to the previous E-Jet version. With numerous standout features, a surge in orders from airlines was only a matter of time. When a manufacturer like Boeing or Airbus introduces an upgraded version of an existing aircraft, airlines often place orders even before the planes enter service. The E-2 family from Embraer was also expected to receive similar attention. However, the reality is that this aircraft line is struggling to attract interest from airlines. Recent statistics on orders for the E-2 series are indeed concerning. The E-195 is the best performing variant with 302 orders. In second place, but with a significant gap, is the E-190 with only 44 orders. Notably, the E-175 has not received any orders at all. The situation has become so serious that the E-175 project has been put on hold, and the first aircraft is not expected to enter service before 2027. So why does an aircraft series launched nearly a decade ago face such challenges, to the extent that one of its variants has received no orders? The disappointment of the E-2 series in the market is the result of a complex set of issues. To understand this better, we must go back to its predecessor, the E-Jet, and focus on a specific market, United States. During nearly a decade, the first generation variants of E-Jet became the flagship of local airlines and were rented by the big U.S. airlines for domestic flights. With a total of 1874 orders and 184 the rest that haven't been delivered completely, the success of E-Jet compared with the failure of E-2 in the U.S. market can be explained through an important concept known as the Scope Clause. This clause stipulates that regional airlines of major carriers are prohibited from operating any aircraft with a seating capacity of more than 76 seats or a maximum takeoff weight exceeding 86,000 pounds. The first reason, considering the technical specifications mentioned before, it shows clearly that this clause made all the variants of E-2 not feasible for the U.S. market. This is the same with the E-175 variant of the first generation that completely the requirements from the clause explain to its popularity with the local airlines. The airline can adjust the number of seats on the E-175 to suit the regulations in the scope clause, then optimize performance and meet better passenger demand. The effect of the scope clause is not only limited to determining of the technical standards, but also reflects the transformation in the way of movement of the aviation industry. When the big airlines broaden the net and optimize their action, the operation of the aircraft that suit to provision becomes extremely important for maintaining competitiveness and economic efficiency. 
However, the issue is not only the scope clause, we mentioned one of the huge manufacturers is a reason above. Indeed, secondly, another significant factor affecting E2's difficulties in the market is the failure of the strategic partnership agreement between Embraer and Boeing in 2019. Under this agreement, Boeing was expected to own 80% of the Brazilian manufacturer's aircraft manufacturing division, while Embraer would retain the remaining 20%. However, shortly after the agreement was announced, many airlines postponed their E-2 orders due to concerns over the uncertainty surrounding such a large-scale transaction. Moreover, this agreement was only preliminary and non-binding, which made the situation worse and led to numerous cancellations. This uncertainty was confirmed in 2020 when Boeing decided to withdraw from the agreement, resulting in a series of Brazilian aircraft orders previously on hold being canceled. They blamed Boeing and cited this as the primary reason for the E-2's underperformance in the market. However, the question remains whether this argument is truly valid. It could be argued that if Boeing had participated, the E-2 would have had a better chance of performing well thanks to Boeing's extensive sales network, uh, support, and marketing resources, thereby enhancing customer confidence in the program and leading to more orders. It shows that Boeing is really a big reason for it, isn't it? Thirdly, the real issue lies with Embraer itself. You may wonder how Embraer could be responsible for its own product's failure. Hold on, it's highly likely that the company either did not conduct adequate market research or, or conducted research that led to misleading results, causing them to develop a product misaligned with the changing needs of the aviation industry. As airlines increasingly shift to a point-to-point -point operating model, the role of narrow-body aircraft is also transitioning from serving short-haul flights to medium-haul flights. This means that using narrow-body aircraft such as the Airbus A320 and Boeing 737 for routes longer than 7 hours has become a common trend. This shift will become even more evident with the launch of the Airbus A321 XLR, which is capable of flying continuously for over 10 hours. Unfortunately, Embraer seems to have failed to keep up with these changes as the E-2 series is still primarily designed for short and medium-haul flights. Some may argue that comparing the E-2 to larger aircraft such as the 737 and A320 is unfair, but this comparison holds when considering the E-2's direct competitor, the Airbus A220. Although the A220 theoretically belongs to the same segment, it can fly a range of up to 7,037 kilometers nonstop, surpassing the E-2's range by 1,850 kilometers. Additionally, the Airbus aircraft features a wider cabin, measuring up to 129 inches, which offers greater passenger comfort, a benefit that the E-2 may struggle to provide due to its more limited size. Finally, an important factor to consider, and possibly the main reason for the E-2's failure, is operating costs. In this aspect, the A220 outperforms the aircraft beyond question. For example, the 100 variant has a similar cost per trip to the E-190. However, the A220 has a 15-18% to 18 lower cost per seat compared to the E195. Moreover, this variant also demonstrates better economic efficiency than the E195, with similar cost per seat, but 6-8% to 8 lower cost per trip. Failing to keep pace with the rapidly changing market trends, Embraer developed a product that does not align with the current demands of airlines. The limited range and smaller cabin make it can't compete even with its direct competitor. Airbus A220, the aircraft can supply a longer range, more comfort in the cabin, and superior operating performance. The wrong assessment of Embraer about the shifts in aviation and the failure to realize the increasing demand for narrow-body aircraft with long range make E2 left behind in the quick shift of the aviation industry. Unfortunately, as long as the A220 remains in the market, the E2 will struggle to escape its second-place position. Do you think E2 can compete with A220? In conclusion, the Embraer E2 series has faced significant challenges in a competitive aviation market dominated by major players like Boeing and Airbus. Despite its innovative features and intentions to cater to evolving airline needs, the E2 has struggled to gain traction. As airlines increasingly seek efficient and adaptable aircraft for diverse routes, Embraer must reassess its strategies and align its offerings with market demands to enhance the E2's appeal and secure its position in the industry. Leave your thoughts below. We'd love to read it. Thanks, and wish you always have safe flights.